there's a good reason why Christmas is referred to as the most wonderful time of the year. As we celebrate our religious beliefs, engage in cultural customs, and consider what matters most in life, this holiday season offers us the chance to not only spend time with our loved ones but also to promote love and generosity to others. Christmas is also recognized as the season of giving, whether that means contributing monetarily to charities and groups that aid the less fortunate or exchanging gifts with your spouse, children, or other family members. But in these tales, the season that was supposed to be joyous swiftly transformed into one of unanticipated sorrow and catastrophe, leaving families devastated and unable to observe Christmas in the same way going forward. These ten Christmases, regrettably, will always be marred by tragedy. Zazzo Preston, a 26-year-old from Anaheim, California, was enrolled in Cypress College's program with the goal of becoming a domestic abuse counselor. Preston's kind, forgiving, and compassionate nature, however, led to her being stuck in a marriage where she endured years of abuse at the hands of her spouse, William Wallace. Wallace served 18 days in jail after entering a guilty plea in 2008 for assaulting Preston and making death threats against her. Wallace eventually convinced Preston to reconcile with him despite being subject to a restraining order. For the next three years, Wallace kept threatening to kill Preston, and tragically, at Christmas 2011, he carried out his threat. Wallace, Preston, and their seven-week-old boy shared an apartment with Preston's kids, ages three and eight, from a previous relationship. The couple attended a neighbor's Christmas Eve party on December 24, 2011, but when they got home, they got into a fight that swiftly turned violent. Wallace pushed her mother into a glass table, according to testimony given later by Preston's oldest daughter. Wallace then requested her assistance in removing the glass fragments from her mother's body. Then Wallace went into the bathroom to clean Preston up, but he dropped her and banged her head against the side of the toilet seat. Wallace led Preston into a bedroom after that, but he never asked for assistance. Preston passed away from her wounds at around 1 in the morning. Wallace, however, positioned Preston wearing sunglasses on the couch on Christmas Day and recorded the kids unwrapping gifts in front of her body. Mommy ruined Christmas, she got drunk and ruined Christmas, he then said to the kids. Wallace didn't notify 911 that his wife needed medical assistance until about 9.30 a.m. on Christmas Day. Preston wasn't breathing when paramedics got there, but they tried CPR since there wasn't any blood or signs that she had been beaten. Later on, the hospital declared Preston deceased. Wallace was arrested the same day, but he maintained that Preston had assaulted and bit him, and that she had fallen against the table as he was defending herself. Later on, his lawyer contended that Preston's death was caused by her repeatedly slipping and tripping while intoxicated. Wallace, who is currently 39 years old, was not found guilty of second-degree murder until April 7, 2021. He was awarded credit for the nine years he had previously served in prison when he was sentenced to 15 years to life on June 4, 2021. Della Callagher, 46, became ill on December 25, 2012, in the evening, following a Christmas Day pub lunch at the Railway Hotel in Hornchurch, East London, where she had consumed a four-course turkey meal. Callagher was one of seven individuals in their 16-person group who fell ill after consuming the turkey. Nonetheless, Callagher's health kept becoming worse. On Boxing Day, December 26, 2012, Callagher's husband, John Callagher, 51, drove her to Queen's Hospital in Romford, where she was given an examination in an ambulance. According to John, Callagher had an injection but no blood test was conducted. Instead, she was told to lie down at home. Later that day, Callagher sadly went into cardiac arrest at home. John phoned an ambulance, but by then, Callagher barely had a pulse. She tragically passed away on December 27, 2012, at the hospital, leaving her 14-year-old daughter and her husband behind. The family of Callagher proceeded to sue Mitchells and Butlers, the company that operates the railway hotel, in civil court for negligence. However, since 33 individuals became ill in all, police and health safety authorities have started a thorough inquiry into the incident. The Clostridium perfringens bacteria, which is frequently responsible for food poisoning, was found to be the cause of Callagher's death during the investigation. The turkeys were cooked on Christmas Eve but were not properly chilled or reheated before being served to visitors. Additionally, it was subsequently found that May Micaiah, the 37-year-old chef at the establishment, and Anne-Marie McSweeney, the 40-year-old pub manager, had fabricated documents to conceal the fact that the turkey meat had been dangerously overcooked. McSweeney and Kaya were both found guilty of tampering with the legal system. Kaya received a year in prison while McSweeney received an 18-month term on January 23, 2015. In addition, Mitchell's and Butler's, a chain of pubs, was fined $1.9 million for selling contaminated food. On Christmas morning in 2022, Varun Chand, a 37-year-old New Zealander, went to pick up a yellow two-seater boat he had purchased on Facebook Marketplace as a surprise gift for his family at around 7 in the morning. 
Later that morning, after returning, Chan brought his two youngest children, who were then 7 and 12 years old, to try their hand at canoeing on Lake Ryua, a man-made freshwater lake at Rotokohadu Reserve, which is near McLean's Island in Harewood, Christchurch. In the canoe, Chan and his daughter, who was 7 years old, faced each other at first, but then turned to face each other more comfortably. Regretfully, as a result of the young girl's leg getting caught under Chan's, the boat capsized as she attempted to extricate herself. When the canoe capsized, Chan managed to hang onto the two-person vessel while his daughter, fortunately donning a life jacket, swam and signaled for assistance. Eventually, Chan's daughter was found and saved, but sadly, Chan submerged himself and was never seen again. Unfortunately, Chan did not have a life jacket on either. On Boxing Day, his body was found 22 feet underwater. In addition to leaving behind his three children and his 14-year wife Sharon Shomadut, Chan's younger brother Vizel claimed that the yellow canoe would represent yet another tragic loss. That Christmas morning, the family had gone to the burial of their other brother, Avanash, 33, who had perished in a vehicle accident in June 2021. On Christmas morning in 2021, Margaret Shively had intended to visit her mother Elaine Pfizer, aged 57, at her Detroit, Michigan home to assist with dinner preparation. Nevertheless, Shively and her family made the decision to visit Pfizer's house to find out what was going on after repeatedly phoning her mother and not receiving an answer. Upon reaching their destination, the family chose to peer via a window when Pfizer did not answer the door. They then noticed what looked to be a body lying on the ground. The family alerted the police, and when Shively's husband broke through the door, he discovered the terrible truth. Pfizer and her nonverbal, wheelchair-bound 13-year-old adoptive daughter, Donna Fields, had been shot inside the house. Following his escape from the scene, Dwayne McDonald, the 62-year-old spouse of Pfizer, was listed by the police as a person of interest. The shooting had taken place around 5.45 a.m. that morning. Police learned on December 28, 2021, that McDonald and two acquaintances were holed up in an apartment complex. After obtaining a search warrant, police entered the building, only to be met by an armed McDonald. After that, there was a shot, which prompted the officers to retaliate, killing McDonald instantly. The Hughes family had had a great Christmas Eve 2008, visiting friends, going shopping, and even buying a new television to replace the old one in their co-ed poeth, Rex Sim Holmes' first floor living room. Robert Hughes fitted the new television after he got home. Then he made the decision to relocate the outdated widescreen TV into the kids' playroom downstairs because it was heavy, deep, and bulky. Emily, Hughes's four-year-old daughter, enjoyed taking the Nintendo DS game system she shared with her brothers to a private area so she could play it by herself. Unfortunately, Emily was resting on her stomach at the foot of the stairs, and Hughes, carrying the old TV set, stumbled over Emily, pinning her down with the television on her head. Her father was unaware of this. Emily's TV was removed by Hughes right away, and he carried her into the kitchen as his wife Louise Sandra Hughes dialed for help. Emily never came to, even though Mr. and Mrs. Hughes tried to revive her until the paramedics arrived. Emily's brain was not getting enough oxygen or blood, so she was sent to the Rexham Mailer Hospital and then moved to the Alder Hay Hospital in Liverpool. Sadly, Emily had a broken skull in the collision, and her brain trauma halted her blood pressure and pulse. On Christmas Day, at 10.10 p.m., she was declared deceased. Sophia Loa's mother, Tina Mendoza, was naturally concerned that her daughter would not complete high school when Sophia became pregnant at the age of 16. Mendoza, however, said, Boy, did that girl prove me wrong, as Aloha continued to graduate, take care of her child, keep good grades, and work. By 2000, Aloha then 20 years old, and her daughter Jasmine, then 4, had returned to Mendoza's Stockton, California home. Regretfully, what was meant to be the most memorable Christmas ever ended up being the worst, and sever their family's bonds. Aloha made the decision to go last-minute Christmas shopping on that Christmas Eve, hoping to find Jasmine the ideal present, a new scooter. Mendoza went to bed while Aloha went shopping. On December 24, 2000, however, Mendoza was awakened from her sleep by loud screams coming from outside soon after midnight. Aloha was waiting behind Mendoza's car, holding her hand and yelling, Go get him, I've been stabbed, as Mendoza fled outside. Instead of sprinting in Aloha's direction, Mendoza returned inside the home to dial 911. Upon the arrival of detectives, Aloha was discovered laying close to her car, which was brimming with Christmas gifts for her daughter. The only lead the Stockton police had when searching for a suspect was the observation of a light-colored Ford Thunderbird or Mercury Cougar driving away from the scene at the time of the murder. Sadly, after being taken to the hospital, Aloha, their lone witness, was declared dead just after one in the morning. Lisa Orozco, who was Aloha's closest friend at the time, subsequently stated that the previous night, someone called her and said that someone would kill her. On the other hand, Orozco said Aloha received a phone call, but Ed Rodriguez, a lead detective with the Stockton Police Department, said he was never informed about it. 
Rodriguez and the California State Governor's Office offered a $50,000 prize in 2001 for any information that would result in Aloha's arrest and conviction. Regretfully, despite the fact that innumerable individuals have been questioned and questioned again, no suspect has ever been identified. Even though Aloha's daughter Jasmine is grown and has a child of her own, Christmas Eve serves as a somber reminder of Aloha's passing and the unresolved case. Cass and Hallwood, a 12-year-old from Winsford, Cheshire, was allergic to nuts and experienced asthma. Hallwood frequently spent Christmas in the hospital because of his asthma. But since 2020 was the only Christmas that Hallwood did not spend the holiday in the hospital, it is only natural that the child awoke on Christmas morning eager to receive presents. Hallwood, his mother Louise, and his three brothers, Cohen and Corley, who are 18 years old, and Caden, who is 13 years old, spent the day at home together. After supper, Hallwood went to his grandparents' house and licked his plate clean. Hallwood and a few of his buddies visited the Wharton Recreation Park following dinner. After around 20 minutes, Hallwood gave his mother a call and asked her to send one of his siblings to the park so he could get his inhaler. After using the inhaler, one of Hallwood's twin brothers observed that his brother seemed well. Louise knew the inhaler hadn't worked, though, when she got a second call from her son. The EpiPen, which had been stored at Hallwood's grandparents' home, had sadly expired by the time Louise hurried to the park with it. Hallwood's bulging eyes, which indicate an allergic reaction, were there when Louise arrived at the park, but the EpiPen injection had no effect on his health. After Louise dialed for help, Hallwood was taken to Cruz Leeton Hospital. Sadly, he passed very soon after due to anaphylaxis deadly asthma, which was brought on by eating peanuts and included bilateral pneumonia. Tragically, it was later learned that Albert, Hallwood's grandfather, had prepared a gammon and a beef joint for Christmas dinner the previous evening but had been unaware of Hallwood's nut sensitivity. He utilized a gammon glaze, which contained nuts. Cody Hedich, 28, of Spencer Township, Michigan, called his wife Sash Hedich, 27, a fantastic mom and a great wife. He also called her ridiculously smart. Sasha cherished baking, canning vegetables, hosting get-togethers with friends, and even making time to do things for her kids. After their daughter was born, Sasha struggled with postpartum depression. Thankfully, she was treated and made a successful recovery. Regretfully, Sasha experienced difficulties once more just before their son was born in July of 2015. Her mental health never got better, even with support group counseling and treatment. Sasha informed Cody that she was heading to Starbucks with their five-month-old boy and three-year-old daughter on Christmas Day of 2015. Cody remained at home to tidy things. But Sasha was absent far longer than anticipated, and later that evening Cody filed a missing persons report. Regretfully, Sasha was discovered dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in a secluded place at approximately 10.30 a.m. on December 26, 2015. Their son was found strapped inside Sasha's car, trembling, and their daughter was found cuddled up against her body. After receiving hypothermia treatment, both kids were back at home on December 29, 2015, and they were doing well. Even though Cody said, this isn't something that a healthy Sasha would have done, he had no idea how serious Sasha's ideas had gotten or how tragically unexpected her death would be. At the age of 14, Lauren Kayford of Bryn Mawr, Wales, received a serious epilepsy diagnosis. The 19-year-old, in spite of her illness, devoted her life to serving others by volunteering at her church, food bank, youth club, and local St. John Ambulance organization. Kayford loved Chinese food, so the family enjoyed it together on Christmas Eve of 2018. Kayford then went upstairs to her bedroom to wrap her Christmas gifts. When Robert, Kayford's father, returned upstairs about 20 minutes later, he discovered his daughter unconscious and face down on her bed. As Dell, Kayford's mother, dialed for an ambulance, Robert started CPR. After Robert carried on doing CPR, Kayford was successfully revived by the paramedics upon their arrival. Regretfully, Kayford's irreversible brain injury was revealed upon her arrival at Neville Hall Hospital. After passing away on December 26, 2018, she was buried wearing fluffy socks and mint green fleece pajamas that she had received as a Christmas present. Kayford passed away tragically, but she continued to live out her dream of serving others and has used organ donation to save three lives. Gareth Blenkins, a 40-year-old resident of Armley, Leeds, was characterized as a person of strength, protection, and selflessness. In fact, he would frequently inquire, do you need a Blenkins cuddle? If someone was depressed, this devoted father sadly passed away on Christmas Day in 2022 after a heart attack. Blenkins was in Cottingly enjoying the holiday with his family. Blenkins made the decision to step outdoors and have a cigarette as the evening was coming to an end. Blenkins went back inside laughing and joking, and everything was going well. Suddenly, though, he clutched his chest, fell to the floor, and began having a fit. Blenkins was sent to the hospital immediately, but he did not make it since his brain was oxygen-starved for an extended period of time. The 15-year-old kid Blenkins left behind was what he lived for. 